have the data entered, you can select it and you want it to exclude the uh, titles at the top. Go to Insert, select the Scatter Graph, like this one here. And let's add some elements to it, such as um, the titles along the axes. So go to Plus and then go to Axis Titles. You can double click on these. And so for this one, it's the horizontal axis and that's always the first one. I bet what I could do is just copy that and then select all, oh, wait a minute, there we go, paste it in, and we get this one right here, and uh, I could either paste it in or type it in, see if I can find a way to vertically select it, there we go, and what do you think the title of this graph would be? Well, it's going to be the vertical axis versus the horizontal axis, so this needs to say temperature versus height, I'll let you type that one in. Let's look at some other things that we need to do on this graph. Uh, I guess that's going to include a trend line. So go to plus right here, go to trend line, and then uh, we want more than just that. We want the equation to show, so we're going to click that arrow, more options. Scroll down here, I think. Let's see where it's at here. Hmm, that didn't work, so let's go again. Trend line right there, more options. Scroll down here display equation on chart there it is and you can see it's running it's appearing right over here and um, what we're going to do is a right click and format it show that it so that it's showing more significant figures so uh, format trend line label and go from general to either number uh, I prefer scientific notation that way it's showing three significant figures here all right so um, I guess we can make this bigger. I uh, wonder if we go to home and then crank up the size a little bit. And the other thing we can do is right click on the graph and say move chart. We want to put it on its own tab so that we can make it big. So let's go put it down here on chart number three. This will make it so that we can print it out landscape and uh, you know take up a lot of space on the paper so you can see all the details. Oops, wrong one there. I think it goes here. Yeah, something like that. Maybe 16 point font is a bit much, but you get the idea. You can even, most likely, increase the number sizes right here as well. Okay, so what about this equation of the line? Obviously, the 4.90 is the slope. What is the y? Well, the y is the vertical axis. I'm going to change that to t. And then the horizontal axis, I'm going to change that to H. So instead of X, well, what's that? Okay, where was I? Okay, so on this one, it looks like I could really change that to 49.0 because it's times 10 to the first power. So I'm going to take that part off. This is the slope. So. I could also include the units on that slope. Since I'm using Kelvin for the y-axis and meters for the other one, uh, that would be the slope. All right, so that's the equation of this line, and it's got the units for the slope there as well. Okay, let's go over to another set of data. This is um, a plot, um, or data rather, for four moons of Jupiter with their orbital radii and their period. This is the length of time in days that it takes um, these moons to go around Jupiter. So for example, Europa takes about three and a half days to go around and it is located 670,000 kilometers away from Jupiter. If I select just the data and go insert scatter graph, I can determine if this is a linear relationship or not. Um, I can do some, the same kind of things I've done before, which is make sure I put the axis titles out there. And so when you do the homework, or the lab rather, uh, you just make sure you put these um, you know, variables along these axis and also give the chart title. All right, let's see, what would the chart title be? All right, well, the independent variable is this one. So that's going to be T in days this way and R in kilometers this way. So it's going to be period versus orbital radii. If I go and look at uh, the trend line for this, you'll see that it's not really linear. Uh, you might think, well, it just has noise in it, but these numbers are pretty 
uh, well defined, so this is not really a linear relationship. What we could do though is um, analyze it in two different ways. So for this one, I want to I want you to do two different graphs. One of them is I want you to turn this into a log scale. So I'm going to say format axis and go down here to log scale. And then we're also going to log scale this one as well. And then we'll see that if we log scale it, then it becomes linear. Okay, I need to take the trend line off just for a moment. Now I want the data to be spread out along this. So what I'm going to do is have the graph uh, not start at 1, 1, but start at, um, I wonder if I could go like this. And so just click on it and say format axis. And the minimum is not going to be 1. I want to change it to 100,000 so that it gets a better uh, spread of the data across the chart. I could do other things like, uh, you know, maximize the space so it looks better on printout, increase the size of the fonts, you know, properly label these as well. But also maybe add some grid lines. So I think that's going to be under format up here. Maybe, maybe design. That's probably not even there. It's probably, that used to be the old way. And, the old version of Excel. I forgot that it's now under the plus sign right here. Going to grid lines and let's add the minor grid lines as well. All right, so you can see them gray in the background like that. We can add a trend line and we've even made it linear, um, believe it or not, except it shows up as a graph. And that's the thing about straight lines on log graphs is that they don't look like a straight line. So that's why I don't think this is very helpful to do it this way. Um, at least, I mean, it does show that there is a linear relationship, but not between, um, not between R and T, but instead, as Kepler showed, there is a re linear relationship between period squared and orbital radius cubed. Uh, Kepler really said same major axis cubed and period squared, but these are pretty much circular orbits. So that's why I'm using radii here. So if I select the data and go insert, scatter, I can get a graph like that and, you know, do the normal kinds of things like uh, axis titles, um, maybe add some more grid lines in there. And I do have a linear relationship now. All right, so what do you think this would be labeled here? Um, looks like it's going to be period, so you put period squared, and then in parentheses you put days squared for the units. And then along this axis here you would say that's our independent variable, so it's this one right here, and that would be orbital radius cubed, and then that would be in kilometers cubed. The, uh, the graph up here, we could say, even in shorthand, I guess this might be okay. I'd really prefer, to, prefer it to be the words, but we could say period squared versus um, orbital radius cubed. We could go through the effort of making these superscripts, but I'm not going to do that for this video. Going to the plus sign, we can then add the trend line and display it on the graph itself. Sometimes it takes a couple of attempts to get it to show up properly. Let me try it one more time. Yeah, sometimes it just doesn't work as well. I'm going to hide it. Oh, it was right there, actually, wasn't it? So let's try it again. Right there. Display equation on the chart. And it doesn't really show up in the format that I want, and it's not exactly written the way I want. So what do you think the Y should be here, first of all? Um, that's the wrong one. Let's go over here. Increase the size of that so you can see it. The Y should be the vertical axis, which is this guy right here. I wonder if it'll just let me copy that and put it over here. Oh, sure did. Okay, so that's period squared along this axis. I guess I can do the same thing over here. Let's try that. No, didn't quite work. I'm trying control A and things like that. I wonder if I could select sideways. All right, that's kind of okay. All right, I really need to put uh, days on there but it doesn't look like it's working well for me. I'm not going to give up, though. Let's see if I can get it right over there. 
days. And then carrot two. I don't like how it did a superscript there. Still not going to give up on this. Highlight it. Going to try to highlight it carefully like that. Then go to format. And let's take off that stuff. All right, finally got it. All right, what a mess. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Let's do, let's do the same thing there. And let's take this R cubed, and that's going to be my X axis. And we'll see if it'll let me do the same thing down here. And kilometers cubed. I really could make those superscript. I'm not going to do that in this video, though. All right. This doesn't seem to have the proper number of significant figures. I wonder if it'll let me format that. So go format the trend line label, and hopefully it doesn't do, undo all that work I just did. Put it in scientific notation, and it looks like it did not even take. So I'm just going to start over. So don't be afraid just to start over when things are not going right. Go trend line and Having trouble there again. Take off the trend line, perhaps. Pull it up here. Uh, maybe move it to its own chart so we have a good space to work here. And let's try again. Went to more options, display equation on chart. And before I start modifying this, perhaps I should format the numbers first. So right click. Uh, go right here and then go to scientific notation let's make this a little bigger to work with and now start to realize what this is period uh, squared and I'm going to try to do it right here oh yeah I think it's going to let me do it uh, superscript there we go and the x should be r cubed Now I have that number. So what do you think the units on that number should be? Well, it needs to pop out on the other side in uh, days um, squared. You know, when you're, when you're talking about planets, it's probably going to be years. But th these are moons, so they have uh, the data did have days, and that was day squared for per kilometer cubed. All right. I wonder if I could just copy that. Did Control C and Control V. I guess that worked okay. Or just go up here and do that. All right, and then finally, what do you think the units are going to be on this last term? This is our y-intercept. And it looks like it's going to be days squared. All right, so this is the equation of that line. This is the y, that's the x, and this is the slope, and that's the y-intercept. Uh, now this is not the data that's in the lab, but this is how you do it. And uh, this term, this number right here, is uh, the slope of that line. Hope that gets help. I hope that helps get you started on lab one and the labs that follow. Have a good one.